Well, hello everybody. It is April Fool's Day in many parts of the world, but we're not just gonna talk about pranks. We're actually gonna talk about uh, some, some, some Photoshop and Lightroom tips that you can spin as a prank, but they're actually things that I think could could work into your everyday photo editing for for whatever you're doing here. It's just we can we can also use some of them to have a little bit of fun inside of Lightroom Photoshop. If we happen to gain access to uh, somebody's computer or something along those lines, which most of us probably don't, you're not necessarily in a work environment where you can play a prank on somebody. But again, fun to know and. It serves both purposes. So I just thought it'd be a, a fun way to do some Photoshop and Lightroom tips for you today. All right, uh, we got lots of people joining in. Let's see here, we're doing this live. So this is uh, this is 12.30 p.m. Eastern time on April 1st. If you're watching this outside of 12.30 p.m. Eastern time on April 1st, you are not watching it live, which is fine. I, I always jump in and look at comments afterwards and everything, the video will live on. We're on the same page where you're watching it right now. So it'll, it'll all still be there, but just understand if, if you think you're watching it live and it's tomorrow, you're actually probably not, okay? Well, I know you're not. Okay, uh, let's see here. So uh, we got, oh got Rose from New Zealand, up early to catch you live, cool. Um, Ohio, Massachusetts, lots of people joining in here. So good to see everybody. Uh, Buffalo, Central Illinois, all, all kinds of places. All right, um, also feel free guys, if, if along the way you have a question, if it's kind of tied into to what I'm doing, the better. If it's something totally unrelated, I might not necessarily have an image prepared to be able to answer the question for you, which I'll just tell you, but always gives me ideas for other videos as well. But if you think of a question along the way, feel free uh, to, uh, to jump into the comments and ask, okay? All right, let's get going on. Let's get going on the first one here. I'm gonna switch over to my computer and I'll share my screen with you. Um, so our first one is going to be one inside of Lightroom. So I'm going to go in here and Lightroom's got this thing up in the top left corner called the identity plate. And a lot of people don't know, but you can, you can actually go in there and you can change the graphic that's up here. So if you were to go up here and click on it, you can see that there's a, a couple options here for face detection and uh, I pause it because I don't really do any portrait work. So I don't necessarily have to uh, have to do any face detection, but you can change this whole graphic up there. So what you would do is go, I believe it's under the edit menu on a PC and it's under the Lightroom classic menu on a Mac. And you can go down here to identity plate setup. And inside of that, you're gonna see at the top there, it says identity plate and mine says Adobe ID. And then it says Lightroom Classic, which I believe if you change it to that, it just says Lightroom Classic. And then you can go down there and you can see you can choose personalized, okay? So I'm gonna leave mine set to Lightroom Classic for just a moment. Let's see what Adobe, yeah, well, e either one. Because here's the, here's one, here's, there's two tips involved in this. One, you might wanna change this identity plate to a graphic that you have. Two, you can change, you, you, I'm gonna show you a tip in Photoshop as we create this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy a portion of my screen, all right? Um, there's a keyboard shortcut for it, best to Google that because um, I, I press it and I never actually know what it is, but I'm gonna copy that little identity plate up there. I'm gonna switch over into Photoshop. And what I'm gonna do here is, uh, is show you a little trick. So I'm gonna create a new image, okay? We're gonna go File, New. And the identity plate on a Mac, I believe is around 300 by 42 pixels in height. So it's really, really, really tiny graphic. Again, that's a good Google search because I think it's a little bit different for PC. It might change over time, but uh, just keep that in mind. And then I pasted, I pasted the area that I selected into there. Okay, because this is gonna help me match the color and the font. And for those of you that don't know, when you, when you go into Photoshop, let's say, let's say this was a cover image that I used for this photo. When you're in Photoshop, you can go to the type menu and you can go down here to match font. And I created this image, so I know what the font is, but you can go ahead and you can draw this little box around the text and Photoshop will tell you what font is 
uh, what, what that font is or, or something that's at least close. So you can see uh, a couple of different fonts I have here. It's telling me that I have one on here that's very similar to it, or it's telling me I can download from Adobe Fonts all of these other fonts in there. So you can find a font that's inside of an image right inside of Photoshop. Again, just under the type menu, go down there to match font. So what I would do is go in here and go and match the font. So see if I can figure out what font this one is. Something along those lines. So it's looking like Novell, regular, whatever it's saying there. All right, well, let's just go ahead and let's, uh, let's click on one of them to download it. Okay, and then I know I wanna make the background black. So I'll go through this part pretty quick. I won't do a full Photoshop tutorial on you, but I know I wanna make the background black. I know we, if we grab the, uh, my eyedropper tool and I grab that gray color, I know I can now use a black background, take my type tool, and there we go, Novell Display Regular, and I can type in something like, and we'll have to take the font size down quite a bit here, deleting all photos. I know I misspelled that, but let's bring it in anyway. So let's see here, <laughs> deleting all photos photos. I can move that right into place. And I might even use free transform to make it a little bit smaller. And then what we can do is we can just have a little fun with our selection tools and make a little progress bar like so. And then I would sh add a little stroke to that progress bar with a one pixel stroke. And then I would subtract part of it and then just fill it with gray. Again, I don't wanna make this a whole Photoshop tutorial. There's a lot of keyboard shortcuts in there. There's lots of things, but you get the idea. So you make this little graphic, save it, and I'll just call it delete me, save it as a JPEG anywhere you want. And then we go over here into Lightroom and we can come back to that menu. We can go to identity plate setup. I think you know where this is going. Change it to personalize and I can use a graphic and then locate the file and choose my little delete me graphic. And so now when somebody were to come over here, they can see deleting all photos and they see a little progress bar like, oh no. This is horrible. So anyway, uh, but again, you could change that out. You could put your name up there. You could put whatever you wanted up there, up the top there. So uh, the, the prank was to use a graphic like that, but you can use any graphic, any text, anything like that. In fact, as you poke around inside of the identity plate setup, uh, when you change it from personalized, you'll see you can even type in, you know, Matt Kluskowski. Uh, photography, you can change the font, the size, the color, everything uh, that you see inside of there, okay? All right, so that's number one. Uh, number two, so number two is in Photoshop. So tip number two in Photoshop, let's go, um, let's go create a blank layer here. This one, let's just say, we're gonna go to our preferences here. I'm gonna go down to transparency and gamut. Um, Let's just say this one, I, I think almost all of these tips could present some type of a useful value to your everyday editing. And you know, I don't think this one is. This one's just plain mean. But what you would do is go into your Photoshop preferences to transparency and gamut. Um, and you know that little grid, that little checkerboard grid that signifies transparency in Photoshop? You could go in here and you can change it. So you can change it this way and then you can also go in here and you can change each color. So I can make each color black, which in turn, whenever I would add a new layer, it would appear as black inside a layers panel. It actually still is, it actually still is transparent. You're not seeing the black. It's just how the transparency is being shown to someone is what's changed inside there. So again, that's in your Photoshop preferences under transparency and gamut. And I'm just gonna change mine back to the default so I don't forget to do it later. All right, let's see here. Tip number three. Tip number three, ooh, this is a fun one. Again, fun and can be useful. And that is all of your modules up here inside of Lightroom. Uh, there's an option to hide them. 
So if, for example, like I don't use the map module, I just, I have zero need for the map module. I don't personally geotag my photos and I haven't ever felt the need to, but some people do. Um, but what you can do is up here, you can right click anywhere up there inside those modules, right click, and you'll see a little checkbox and you can just turn one of the checkboxes off. So as I said, you may never do slideshows. Why even bother showing it up there? Okay. I don't do slideshows ever, literally ever. So that's a great one for me to go hide. And I don't hide this stuff because I teach a lot. And then I get a lot of questions from people asking, you know, where my menu is or where something is. So, um, but there's just right click up there and then you can show and hide different modules in there. So for you personally, I think that can help out and it can help simplify the program. And if you wanted to play a prank on somebody, go up there and hide the develop module. And I think that would be a, a fun one as well. Number four, number four, this is this again, this one will disguise itself as mean, but this one's actually very, very educational. And that is under the edit menu, in Photoshop, scroll all the way down to the bottom and you will see keyboard shortcuts, menus, and toolbar. Guys, you can edit every one of those things, okay? So I could go in here and I could edit keyboard shortcuts. A lot of people just know that, you know, Command or Control S is file saved. So if you wanted to play a prank on somebody, you could go under the file menu there and you could scroll down to save and you can change that keyboard shortcut or just delete it or remove it. Um, and then if you find, you know, to take this to an educational aspect, if you find that you're always using, let's say the, what's a good one here? Let's say you're always using the camera raw filter. Okay. So shift command A or shift control A is what the keyboard shortcut is. I always use that one a lot. I can always do shift R. Um, because I know that shift R is, I believe rulers. I'm not quite sure. Could be, or I would change it to command R. I think it's command R. Yeah. Command or control R for rulers. I don't really have a need to show rulers many times in Photoshop. So for me, I think of raw camera raw. I could go change that one to command or control R. Um, you can change anything again. You can delete them and that way you have your own keyboard shortcut. So you can totally customize Photoshop. Know that feature is not available inside of Lightroom. As we go down through here, menus. Again, this goes to the, this one's more for the prank, okay? Some people do it, I, you know, I, I personally think just get used to the menus the way they are, but you can go through here and you can hide menus. You can hide specific items in the menus. So if you find a menu just gets too cluttered, feel free to go through and start hiding uh, different things inside there. You'll see all the little eyeballs. But again, I think of it more as a prank where you go up here and you hide, open, close, save, things like that. Um, I think, you know, you can go more the, down the prank route with that. And then toolbar. This one can be both. This one can be prank. This one can be useful. Uh, for me, you know, I, I'm never ever going to use a 3D tool. I say never ever, but let's just go with mostly never. Um, I'm never going to use a 3D tool. Um, I'm never going to use the history brush tool. Um, you know, the color replacement, there, there's just certain, the red eye tool, there's just certain tools in there I'm never going to use. So you can go ahead and just drag them over into this extra tool section, which means they're not going to show up in your toolbar. Uh, and then just hit done. If you ever notice there's something, you watch a video and you see somebody use a tool and you know you have that version of Photoshop, because that's usually the first thing that I would say to troubleshoot is you might not be on that same version. And somebody uses a tool and you don't have that, go in here and make sure you haven't, <clears throat> you haven't hidden any of those tools. And you can always restore the defaults in there as well. You can change them. You can move them around into different groups if you wanted to. So uh, that's another possibility. In fact, I could go down here. So as an example, <clears throat> maybe I'm always finding I use the healing brush with the brush tool. I could take this and I could drag this down and put it down there in with the brush tool. So it's not necessarily just about, um, about removing tools from there. You can rearrange the groups in which those tools will appear, which is actually a pretty good little tip. Alrighty. Let's see here. Uh, we liking these, we, uh, they, you know, do I, I'm interested, do you have somebody that you can do this on? This is probably mostly for, this is probably mostly for people 
Um, if you were to ever, if you were to ever use it on a prank on somebody, it's probably mostly if you live with somebody that's into Lightroom and Photoshop that you would do this on. If, if you do go to work with people, if you, you're working at an office, I, I would caution you a little bit against some of these things because it could get you fired. You know, somebody, somebody wastes a whole day trying to fix Photoshop because you did something you'd be careful. But again, I think there's some educational value to some of these as well. All right. Also, do me a big favor, guys. Uh, I say this in all of my live sessions because by the nature of making it a live session, there are many, many less people that I will be able to get on here. But if you guys could do me a big favor and share this, there's a little share thing right on YouTube. Grab the link, send it out if you're on Facebook with a camera club or whatever it happens to be, I would really appreciate it. Okay, uh, back to our story here. So let's continue on. I got, so we did menus and shortcuts. Ooh, modules, this is a good one. And again, this is, this is one that I think has great educational value as well as prank value. And that is when you are inside of Lightroom, you see all these panels over here, okay? So when you're inside of Lightroom, you could go and you could right click on any one of the panels and you could choose customize. So I can customize the develop panel and then I can turn on and off. So if there's things I just don't use. So as an example, I don't really ever use the tone curve, so I would turn it off. I do all my uh, tone curve is really just for contrast, some color correction. I do all my contrast and color correction in the basic panel personally. So I can turn the tone curve off, hit save, and now you don't see the tone curve over here anymore. And then come back, right click again. You could always go back in there and change it. Not to mention, you could always change the order too. So you can just click on one of the panels. If you're always doing vignettes, you can always drag the effects panel up toward the top a little bit as well. Okay, there's no right or wrong order. It's whichever one works for you. And if you forget and you wanna get them back to the default, there's a little button there that will do it for you. All right, you notice I'm jumping back and forth. Lightroom Photoshop, Lightroom Photoshop. Oh gosh, this one. I promise you, you have never seen this feature unless you've seen it in a prank that, I, that I've done before. But um, so this one, this one's kind of fun. So we'll come over here to the file menu. This is in Photoshop and this has been around for a long, long time. We come down in the file menu, we go down here to scripts and there's something in here called the script event manager, okay? So we're gonna open up the script event manager and it opens up this, dial, this little window box here. So. The way the script event manager works is you can assign a script or an action even, which I'll show you in a second. You can assign one to an event in Photoshop. So an event is when you go to this list here, you can see uh, start new open document, start save document, close, print, export. And then there's one down here called everything. So where I would say this is educational, okay? You could do something whenever you make a new document, you could have it run in action for you. So I'm gonna walk you through this and what we would do. I'm gonna change it, I'm gonna do the prank first and then I'll show you how you could make it educational, okay? So we go down here and I would say the event is everything, okay? Come down here to the little script section and you have some options in here. So we've got open, resize, worn if RGB, welcome. There's one in here called display camera maker. So I would say when Photoshop does everything, Photoshop is gonna run a script that says it's gonna display the camera maker. And then I just have to click add to add this to my current scripts. Then you click done <laughs> and now literally everything I do, it is gonna display the camera maker. So I think this file, I don't have one, but let's go jump over to this file. There we go. So, no, I must not have included the, uh, it, this is really, really hard because everything I do, there we go. <laughs> so Sony uh, ILC one, that's the alpha one, was used to shoot this file. I click okay, I add a new layer. Sony Alpha One was used to shoot this file. So you could see how annoying this can get um, to even get away. So we're gonna come back over here. I'm gonna turn it off 
because it's you see, even doing that, it, it pulls it up. So I'm just gonna say remove all. So that's one thing you can do. If you know how to write scripts, then you can go down here and browse and write your own script and have Photoshop do something. Or you could say whenever Photoshop, whenever I create a new document, I want Photoshop to convert it to a certain color space, maybe add a border, maybe run it, add whatever it is. But I could go down here to actions and I can choose from my actions inside of here. So if you're familiar, I'm not gonna make this a tutorial on creating actions, but if you are familiar with actions, you could say whenever Photoshop did one of these things to go down and run an action that you have created, which could be useful at times. But that one, that, that whole, the whole message pop-up thing, that will get somebody to seriously like reformat their computer because it makes Photoshop unusable at that point. Like you can't do anything without popping up a message. So um, I, did, I did one in, in, case you're, in case you're trying to think of some ideas. So I did one, I made an action that just had one step and it closed, it was just file close. So then I went into that script event manager and I said, whenever Photoshop opens a document, run this action and we just close it. And then I did another one where I did it on open and I made an action that did like a Gaussian blur of like three or four pixels, just a slight blur. So whenever you would open up a photo, it automatically just runs a slight blur to the photo. So those are some, those are some purposes of evil if you're looking for some ideas. Okay, uh, let's see here. So, okay, along the lines, remember earlier we did the identity plate up here? So along those lines, if we go up into your identity plate setup like we did earlier, um, one of the things we can come down here to personalized, and one of the things you'll see over here in the menu is you can change that. So if, you know, my eyesight's horrible, you can go ahead and you can make this bigger if you wanted. So I can go and make it, you know, 48. That's a, probably a little bit too big. Um, how about 36, something like that. So you could go up there and you can change the size of those things. And then you can change the font if you wanted to, if you just seriously don't like Myriad Pro for some reason, you can change the font, I don't see a reason to. And then if you wanted to take this away from an educational value, you would go in here and you would go and you would knock, if you were doing this to somebody else's computer, you could go and take the font size down by like two points. Don't do it obvious. If you take it down to eight points, they're gonna, lines are gonna know something's up. But if you take it down from like 20 to 18, and then the next day from like 18 to 16, and then 14, and then 12, just little by little every day. It's, it's just, it's like a slow burn. Like it's just, I think it's kind of funny to see. And then also, so you know, to keep along the same lines of working with uh, font sizes, uh, we can come over here to our Photoshop preferences. And I believe we can go to the interface and in the interface, you will see a couple of options here to scale the UI font size. I always set mine to large. Again, my eyesight is horrible. Scale UI to font. So I set, anytime I have an option like this, I set it as big as possible. But again, if you're gonna take this to a prank, you could set it to tiny. <laughs> and it'll make it as small as possible. And just to show you also, I can keep going with this one. We can go to our Lightroom preferences and go under interface and you'll see under interface font size large. So the, the default is small. So if you're watching this and you've never changed this setting, your default font size for the interface is small. That's what's what it was automatically set to. So you can come in here and set it to large. You might have to restart Lightroom for it to take place, but that's a, uh, that's a good one as well. Um, another one, so you can mess with somebody. You know, when you, when you choose specific tools, there's a toolbar down here. And this one is twofold. This is a public service announcement as well as a prank. But see this gray toolbar? So when I go to the brush tool, see it says done, uh, show mask overlay. Well, this toolbar is very, very important because it's got features in it. But if you press the letter T, it goes away. So your cat could have walked across your keyboard and hit the letter T and that goes away. I troubleshoot that, I, I troubleshoot that probably every bit of five times a week with somebody. It's just like, I, I, I don't know how else to do. I've done so many videos on it. It's in every one of my courses. I do it constantly in videos and yet 
it's just, you know, out of sight, out of mind. I think sometimes we see a video, we forget about it and we don't, we don't kind of commit that to memory. And then somebody will say, Hey, I don't see the done button or I don't see the mask overlay. It's T for toolbar. So you could prank somebody by hiding it, but, um, keep in mind that that one's probably going to happen to you at some point if you accidentally hit the letter T. Um, and I think that's about it. So I had UI font size, but I actually, I did that one before. So, um, let me switch back over here just to see, I was going to take a quick look at some of the questions inside of here to see if anybody had any questions. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we got Cameron and Cameron says, let's uh, let me put it on the screen here. Can you use a script that when you click on something that it pops up a message saying that you deleted your photo? Um, so Cameron, number one, that's mean. That's really mean. I'm trying to be nice now. Um, number two, yeah, so when you make an action, okay, and in an action, you have an option to insert a stop. And then when you insert a stop, you actually have the option to put in a message. So you can make an action that has a message that says, like, here, here's what I did one time as a prank is I, I did, I think, I think I did something like, um, Photoshop is about, cause when the, when the stop comes up, it says, it says like stop or continue. So what I did is I put Photoshop is about to delete all of your photos, press stop to confirm this, press continue to continue deleting all your photos. So basically you're giving them two options, both of which delete all of the photos. So, um, but yeah, you can insert little messages into an action and you can add that as part of your, uh, your script events, uh, thing there. John Griffin says, what about the banana tool? I don't know what, I don't know what the banana tool is, but I don't know what to say. Um, let's see here. Anyway, it looks like just lots of happy April fool's days. Hopefully nobody got fooled on a joke, uh, yet. So, uh, but, um, that looks like we got all of the questions in there. So anyway, uh, again, I hope, I hope this was semi useful. They're, they're pranks, they're, they're tips that I framed as pranks, but they're actually, I think a lot of them, as you saw here are things that you can actually use inside of Photoshop or Lightroom or just preferences and settings that you didn't know were available that you can either use or customize, um, your own interface here. We got Gary jumping in. Um, I changed my Lightroom personal plate. Uh, the confirmation sound went away. The option for sound is still checked. I don't know about that one. Um, Richard says, can we change their screen bright brightness gradually? No, you can't. That's, that's an operating system tool. That's not a Photoshop or, or Lightroom tool. So you can't, you can't do that from within Photoshop and Lightroom. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll talk to you again real soon.